Okay, first I want you to tell me about the relationship between blacks and whites in the Eastern Shore during the 30s, the early 30s. Uh, it wasn't too bad. Uh, they didn't, uh, you know, everybody stayed in their place. And it really wasn't all that bad here on the shore at that time. Uh, we had some good ones, we had some bad ones. Same the way it is today. So that's the way we were all through the 30s. Okay, so when you talk about it, talk about blacks and whites staying, you know, so I have, I know who you're talking about. Well, <clears throat> the blacks had their place and the whites had their place. Blacks stayed in their place and the whites stayed in their place. And uh, that's the reason that they got along because uh, we had a lot of good, uh, good uh, white people at that time. Then we had a lot of bad ones also. But uh, overall, I think it was a good relationship. Okay. Um, how, did, how did you hear about the arrest of George Armwood? Uh, my father had a store in Princess Anne at that time. And I was there to the store quite a bit. And in that way, uh, all the news come through. Uh, people coming and going, and that's how we got the news. Okay. Um, <coughs> now, what, so what were you doing on the day that George Armwood was lynched? That's a, that's, that's a good question, but I'm sure that I was up to my father's store on that time, uh, before the lynching. See, what happened, they did this at night. The lynching was done at night. During the day, I was up at my father's store, and then I went down to the other place where I followed the name of Lord Witterson over. I don't know how we, or what we were doing down there, but we were down there at the time, what time it got dark. So what happened at the store? What, what happened? What, what did you see? Well, at the time, well, I, before that, I saw a whole lot of cars coming in town. And uh, I heard rumors that they were going to lynch the boy that night. And during the day, I saw a lot of cars coming in town. And uh, so that night, uh, two of the fellows that owned the store, his sons went up there, called himself going up there to just look. And Joe and I were in the store at the time. Then uh, I heard all this commotion coming down the street. We came outside to see what was going on. And they were dragging him down the street at that time, George Armwood. Uh, they were too concerned with what they were doing. They didn't pay us any attention. So we saw them when they hang, hung him up the tree, took him down, and went back, uh, tied him on the back of the car, started back up the street again. But in the meantime, uh, Mr. Willis made us come in because he didn't know what they might do to us if they saw us out there. Now, will you tell again the story about Mr. Witterson? Start from the beginning as, of, as to him bringing you in to the situation. Well, uh, Mr. Witterson had a farm out there near our house. He used to send his boys out there to do work. He always get us to uh, help them while they were out there. That's how we got a relationship with him. And he was concerned about our safety while all this was going on. Now, okay. Okay, so tell me about the white store owner. Start off and speak up, speak up for me. Well, the guy that they called us into the building during this, the lynching, we, uh, we used to work for him. And then uh, I don't know what I was doing at his place at that particular time. This was a white fella. That's the reason I said in the beginning that there were some good ones, some bad ones. In the, in the area, and uh, he was one of the good ones. And uh, so this is what happened when, when all this was going on, he was scared for our safety, and then he called us back into the store so that they, he's afraid that they might do something to us. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry, you have to stop. Explain. Okay, so begin again and say who he was. And... I said, ask the question again. Okay. Um, Tell me about the white store owner and his reaction to you all being outside watching the lynching. Well, he was a white fellow that uh, we used to work for at times. And I don't really know why I was at his store at the time, but uh, 
the reason he called us back in because he was afraid that they might do something to us. So he was real concerned about our safety. And what did he say? What do you remember? He him? just said, uh, boys, come on back in the store uh, before something else happens. Okay, <laughs> now, how did you feel being a witness at that lynching when you saw them um, hang George Armwood? Well, being young like we were, we were just, uh, we didn't feel very good about it. We f felt that we w wish we could hang a white guy up the same limb, on that same limb. Anybody, didn't care who it was. So uh, really, uh, being young as we were at the time, uh, we didn't have too much different feelings about it. Was it scary? With, I mean... Well, at, uh, at age we were at that time, we weren't scared of anything much. So it really didn't affect us that much. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened the next day when you and Joe told your dad? Well... Start with saying, you know, when you told him. Well, when we told him, when we told our father what had happened, the first thing he wanted to know what we were doing there. And that uh, he didn't want us in, you know, the place uh, like that. <coughs> and... Uh, he, I like to say that he wouldn't even want us to leave home no more for a while until the thing quieted down. But we were able, because of having the store there in Pennsylvania, uh, we were able to go back to the store that morning, and that's when we were able to go over to see him after they burned him up. Okay. Now, <coughs> okay, so you, you went to see George Armwood the next day. Right, uh-huh. Um, what, what did you find? Uh, found his corpse laying uh, up on a pile of ashes, and plus uh, where they had cut his ear off, where they had cut his penis out, and uh, he was about, I'd say about one-third by now. Can you say that again? Can you start over and describe what you did? You went over to the lumber yard. You're telling us, tell it like you're telling us a story, because we don't know it, so you have to... T help us kind of visualize what happened. So if you can go back and, and say that, you know, you, you went over to the lumber yard and this is what you saw. And speak up. But, you, but the problem is, uh, I don't think it was a lumber It might have been a lumber yard, but it wasn't far off in the main street. Okay. All right, well, we'll wherever you remember, you remember. Where, where it was. Okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. Go on. Uh, the next morning, uh, all, quite a number of people were coming in town to see what had happened. And uh, we went over and found found where he was lying and uh, where he was burnt up. Uh, the ear is missing, his penis is missing. And uh, everybody was coming, shaking their heads and leaving. And I, we stayed over there quite a while, I think. Uh, but it was an awful sight to see uh, him being burnt up like that. So how did the townspeople react? Were they milling around? What? Were uh, basically, uh, all the good white people were hanging around. All the hoodlums was, I didn't see any of them around, the ones that were concerned with it, helped to do this. Uh, there was a number of uh, black people that came in town. See, most, this is a, a country town. And most of the people that comes in town is from the areas around, the, you know, the country area around. And a good many of them came in to look at the body before they took it away. So was it a pang of respects? Is that how you saw it? Or was it just to seek curiosity? Curiosity was the biggest thing. Yes, that's what they were. They were curious about what had happened and, and to see him like he was. Because word had gotten around about the lynching, and everybody came in to see what had happened. Can you say that again in a, in a full statement that word had gotten around and people came in because they were curious to come see what, to come see what had what, what he looked like? Yeah. Okay. What did Start I say? out with word had gotten around. Oh, the word had gotten around that uh, they had lynched the boy that night and the, everybody was coming in to see him because they knew he was, uh, word had also gotten around. See, word gets around fast in a small area. And they knew that he he was lying back there where he was, and they come in to see. 
So can you tell me a little bit about how he got to that point? I mean, that they lynched him first, and then what happened? I mean, they... Well, what they did first, they broke into jail. I think, from what I've heard, that when they threw him down those steps, which was about 20 steps, and they were steel steps, that he was dead before they ever took him out of the jail. They drug him down to where they hung him at, behind the car, hung him up the tree for a few minutes, took him down, put him behind the car again, brought him to the spot, and then set him on fire. I guess he wasn't dead enough for it. They were concerned until he, he wanted to make sure he, he was. What was it like in the town afterwards? How, first talk about the black community, how the black community felt afterwards. Uh, that's a good question. The poor back, I guess. Uh, mostly it's talk. Everybody talking about it. And, uh, Again, I'm sorry, can you, I don't mean to interrupt, but can you start over by saying after the lynching, mostly it's Kent, because we're going to pick this up at the beginning. Yeah. Okay, after the lynching, the next morning, uh, word had gotten around that this had happened, and a good many of the uh, neighboring communities came in town, people came in town to see see him, they, where they got out also that he had, they had burned him up and that his body was laying out back in this uh, building. And they were coming in to see to see it. And how about the talk in the town? The talk in the town was, it was a shame. Uh, wanted to know why they had done it. Uh, in fact, I understand after which the lady that he was supposed to have raped said he didn't do it. And uh, it was, the people were furious, but at that time, people didn't have much of a chance around here as far as retaliating for what had happened. Okay. So what do you, well, how did the white community react? Was there tension be between blacks and whites after this event? No, not between the good ones and the, and the blacks. The good ones, they all felt the same way that the blacks had done it, and they thought it was a, a terrible thing for somebody to do like that. Basically, most of the people that were involved in it was out of town because his cars were coming in from both ways for a long time during that day, and then this happened at night. But the good white people in, in Prince Land at that time, uh, they felt as bad as the blacks did. Okay, I also want to go back to your story about your, your dad. Maybe I should cut. Can I cut? Sure. Okay. Okay, so start again with the beginning of the story of what, what happened that, what that afternoon. Let's see what I saw. Mm. Was it day or was it night? This was late in the afternoon, but it, all this went on at night. It was dark by the time that they got down the street with that. This was most of the night, too. Okay, you want me to start when we first saw them? Mm-hmm. The, here in the commotion. Okay. <clears throat> you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. I want to tell you why I was yeah. before mm -hmm. that. Okay, a uh, friend of mine, a boy my name was Joe Melvin and I, was to Mr. Lloyd Witherson's uh, store. He was a white fellow that had a farm out near our, where we lived, and we did a lot of work for him. So then we were at his, his store, and we didn't know, I don't know why we were there, but what happened, we heard all this commotion coming down the street. We went outside to see what it was, and it was down the, the people that was doing the lynching, dragging George Onwood behind the car to a spot, where they hung him up a tree, which was not too far from where we were standing at the time. They hung him up the tree, uh, they hung George up the tree, and then they took him down, put him behind the car, and started back towards town. And at that time, Mr. Witherson made Joe and I go into the store because he was afraid that they would do something to us. Great. Good. Great. Can you cut for a second? That was great. That's what we're talking about. Give us the whole thing, the whole nine yards, the whole...
Okay, so start it at when you're going out of the store. What you saw. Right, and give it all to us. The whole thing. Okay, well, we start when I was at the store and then hearing the commotion movement. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, during that period of time, my friend and I was to um, Mr. Witherspoon's store, who is white. I don't know why we were there, but we were there. And then we heard all this commotion coming down the street. We just we wanted to go out and see what it was. And at that time, they were dragging him down the street to uh, this particular tree. And you could hear it, all the noise they were keeping, howling and hooping and going on. Uh, you could hear it for at least a mile away. And uh, they hung him up the tree. I guess he was up there maybe about three minutes. And then they took him down, hooked him behind the car again, and then drove back uptown with them hollering and hooping behind him. Then what did they do? That's when they took him up and burned, started burning him up, uh, putting, setting him on fire. But you didn't see that part? Right? Yeah, he... Okay. Okay. Cut. Cut? Yeah. I don't... with that. Tell me about how you felt. Well, uh, after this was over and seeing the boy, uh, George Onwood, in the condition he was, uh, basically in my body, I felt like I'd like to do somebody else the same way. I like uh, revenge. I was after re revenge right away. But uh, then in our position, you know, there's only so much we could do, us being boys. And you want to say, and then when I, we told our daddy, that what we had seen, he told us to shut up because he was afraid that someone, uh, you know, it would get out that we saw it and afraid that they might do something to us. Okay, good. Can you, can you tell us one more time? I know we're going over the same ground, but we're going to keep trying. Tell me again about the condition of the body when you saw it, about going, the next day going to wherever it was, lumber yard, mm -hmm. whatever and what you saw, and, and you can tell me in detail what you saw, just take what six, the condition of the body was. And even though there's a lady here, it's okay. Yeah. Just go go through it, really? what you remember. Uh, as far as the body was concerned, we went back to look at it the next day. It was burnt very bad. Uh, his ears was missing. His penis was missing. And the body looked terrible, really terrible. Uh, it had been burnt quite a bit. I don't know how much far they had used, but it was enough to burn him. Well, you could still recognize him. How did it make it feel inside yourself? Oh, it feels like you want to vomit. Uh, it was pitiful. Okay, can you do, do that again? Tell us that again. And go all the way through to describing what happened to him, and then that it made you feel like you wanted to vomit. Oh, when I went to see him the next day? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So start there. Okay, when we went to see him the next day, he was very, he was burnt very, very bad, and his ears was missing, his penis was missing, and it just made you feel like you wanted to vomit. It was just, it was a terrible sight to see. Was that airplane over that? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so do it again. Slowly. Now, do it slowly. Take your time. And also tell me why you went. You say when you went to see him the next day, almost like you were going to pay him a visit. So tell me why you went over there, and then when you went over there, what you what you saw and how it made and you And also, see you said that you walked like four, you think you walked about four miles to see him. Stop. Well, it, I don't know what I did not release really, because... I don't know what I was in town oh. to my father's store. Oh, okay. I think that's where I was at my father's oh, store okay. next so morning. Anyways, he brought us in town. Start where, you know, what, why you went, and then take it slow. <laughs> okay. And the, loud. the next day, uh, we knew by people going over there where they had burned him. We wanted to go over there to see what had happened, more or less curiosity than anything else, and which we did. Uh, the same boy that Joe and I both, uh, we, we went over to see what it, uh, had happened to him. And that's what we saw was the badly burnt body, the ears missing, his penis missing, and it was a terrible sight to see. 
And it made you feel sick in the stomach. Okay, cut. Bill, Andrew, you said what you said. Okay. Uh, okay, don't look there. I know, I'm sorry. It's like, I'm sorry. Okay. I, uh, uh, after they had done hung him up the tree uh, and put him behind the car and started back uptown, Mr. Mid Mr. Witterson made us come in. He wanted us to come in because he didn't know what they might do to us, you know, if they found that we had seen it. Then the next day when we told our father, told my father what we had seen, he told us to shut up because he was afraid that where we get out that we had seen it and then they would do something to us. Great. Good. Cut. What the right. Okay. Seventeen thirty eight ten. So we're ready? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so go ahead and talk about the relationship. Well the relationship between the blacks and the white around here during that period of time, uh, it wasn't all that bad. As I said before, you had your good one, white ones, you had the bad white ones. Uh, most of them were farmers, and uh, most of the blacks worked on the farms at that time, those that didn't have little truck farms of their own. And uh, they, they looked out for the people that were working for them. They always looked out for them. The reason I said that, you know, you knew your place, uh, we had movies around here. We had to go upstairs uh, in the balcony. And that's why we knew we had to go for in order to see a movie. So that wasn't any problem until, uh, you know, later years. Uh, the blacks got tired of going upstairs, so they decided they wanted to go downstairs, too. But we didn't have that much of a problem with that and changing that. So really, it wasn't really that bad as far as the relationship was concerned with the people around here. I, uh, I guess you know, like I said, people knew the place, and uh, that's what they did. Okay. I can't talk now, can I? Yeah. 